I love seeing everybody's names pop up. So make sure you say hello and where you're from for any of our new friends. And okay, so what I wanna show you guys today are some um, beautiful flowers that I have. Oh my gosh, wait till you see these, crazy. And I have been experimenting um, playing with canvas, with raw canvas. And I wanna show you some stuff from my up, upcoming Zoom class and all the other good stuff. And I also wanna to talk to you guys about abstracts because I know that there's a lot of us trying to find our way there. So, yay, good morning, good morning. Let's give it another minute. Da -da 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 -da. I don't know which bouquet to show you guys. Oh, they're so good. Love, love, love. Okay, ready? This one's heavy. This one's, oh my gosh, so heavy. Okay, wait. <laughs> All right. This Dahlia right here, let me just even take it out of this thing. This Dahlia, you guys, is one that, okay, hello, gorgeous. That's so cute. Okay, it's dripping, dropping other leaves from other flowers. So this Dahlia, was from a batch that I got at Costco. So for anybody who doesn't know what a Costco is, on the East Coast, they have BJ's, and I'm sure there's something like this internationally where they're like, you know, you have a membership, you pay like 60 bucks, but you go and you get things that are really cheap and in bulk. So one of the things that they have in the springtime are Dahlia bulbs in bulk. So I bought a whole bunch of these last year and planted them. And I did not dig these up because we don't have to dig them up, but I, we don't have to dig them up, but I think I'm going to try and dig up my new ones because they're more expensive. So I got a big bag, probably for like 12 bucks, where my other dahlias I'm gonna show you are more like $6 each. So there's the difference, but oh my goodness. So these have all popped up. The thing about the Costco ones are they're all the same color or they're the same style, but this is, you guys know, this is one of my favorite colors. So I have to show you that. So it's so big that it like plops over. So you have to stake them and stuff. But I think I'm going to be an official Dahlia gardener. That's my thing. All right. So now this is so awesome. This is like the best time for flowers. Okay. Ready? I'm going to pull this one out too. Okay. This is called a naked lady. And the really sweet story about this plant, you guys, is that, you know, if you know me and you've been following me, you know how close I am to Mark's mom who passed away, but she lives up in the mountains, like right over here. And all along her road were these flowers. And I would be like, what the heck? There are no leaves, okay? That's why it's called the naked lady. There are no leaves. And they are the most beautiful pink flowers. And a lot of people in our area just, they're like weeds. They just multiply and they self-seed, self-sow, and they um, don't need any water, <laughs> like no water at all. So over the last couple of years, I've noticed some have popped up in my area, in my garden. I never planted one of them, so they've flown around from a birdie and um, they are multiplying. And where they're multiplying is an area of my garden that is like the, like the, the like when you come to visit me, I'd say, please don't look over there. They're growing there. So there's no um, water. It's like where the kids' toys are or their old bikes or like a little bit of a junkyard. So embarrassing. But anyway, so I decided where they're growing, no one can even see them, that I wanted to cut a couple and I had no idea, you guys, but they smell like bubble gum. I am not kidding you. Aren't they unbelievable? Okay, so these are called Naked Ladies. I don't know if you can grow them where you are, but Google them. I'm sure if you Google them, act don't Google Naked Ladies, actually, because you don't even want to know what's going to come up. But maybe put in Google, <laughs> maybe put in Naked Lady uh, Flower. <laughs> I just realized, in fact, I was going to tag him. I tagged him once on my Instagram. I'm like, oh my God, the people are going to be coming over to my Instagram that have typed in naked lady hashtag expecting some really awesome things. And yep, they're going to see my flowers. So anyway, all right. So this is one of my bigger bouquets, the um, brown-eyed Susans. 
brown eyes twizzins are still from last week and a little bit of the bougainvillea and also the freesias too aren't they gorgeous okay but that is not even what's so amazing to come all right i gotta figure out where i'm gonna put this guy I'm gonna put it right here so heavy okay ready all righty so excited okay ready to meet my friends whoopsie <laughs> All right, I'll do one at a time. So you guys, these are the dahlias from um, Swan Island, all right? So look at this cute vase. I just found it. We, um, I don't know, they were with some old glasses that we packed away and I don't know what they were. I don't know if this is a large shot glass. I don't know ever, I don't remember ever buying these, but there's two of them. So maybe they were shot glasses or some drink glasses, but I thought they were, really pretty to just put in these tall dahlias all right so i wrote them down so see if i can remember this one is cutie patootie and i didn't realize that it changes color okay this one's been around in my vase for a while so it changes color gets a little lighter on top so beautiful and this one is called wait okay yeah this one's called patricia and sunset is that incredible? And I just love how sweet that is. Look how just just the two stems in a shot glass, in a tall shot glass. <laughs> okay, so then, all right, I'm gonna put this one down. I just love that cutie patootie one. It's a little small. Like, look at the difference between these two in size. What? Huge. Okay, and then, how about these this little bouquet so same thing in this tall face glass shot glass um, I put two dahlias and then I had I have these hollyhocks that um, have gone crazy and I'm so happy because I had gophers eat them all in the springtime and then they just kind of grew back by them I we got rid of the gophers I had my, yeah, I'm not gonna tell you about that. But anyway, we got rid of one of the gophers that was eating this plant. So it grew back and it's so beautiful. So I wanted to show you guys and a little piece of salvia, but they're they're nice and tall in the back. It's kind of, my bouquet is kind of wonky right now. But this one is called Sun Kissed. And I think Molly was on um, this morning in the group just talking about how beautiful like just a pale pale yellow is you know what a gorgeous color that is and just perfect name right sun kissed and this one is stunning this one is called gabrielle marie which is kind of fun because there's a uh, really amazing artist in santa cruz called marie gabrielle so anyway um i just wanted to show them to you and i wanted you guys to see when i turn the camera down how much the flowers and their petals and how much inspiration that I can get just from looking at the flowers. Like this fell off the um, hollyhock today. Okay, look, I don't know if you guys can see this, but whoopsie, here we go. Well, oh, there's a little bright light happening over there, but just the shape of it and the way you could just doodle something like this. It's like a little crown with a little hat on top but every part of the flower is just amazing. And what was happening is I had a whole bunch of flowers in here and a lot of petals would fall. I would come into my art room in the morning and there was a whole bunch of petals that just did its thing. And I sort of left them where they were and I started taking photos of them and I just love them. Not only are the colors so bright, like just talking to you guys this morning, these started to fall off and what a great, what a great color that is. And it's sort of think, you can think, you know, you may not have an idea what to paint with on a particular day, then look at your flowers, look outside, look at something that's really pretty, and then just grab that for your inspiration. Aren't they amazing? Okay, so what I wanna show you guys today is a couple things. I wanna talk to you about, um, this raw canvas I've been painting on. So I'm gonna I'm gonna show some of it holding up and then some of it 
down and I'm gonna do a little demo. And then I wanna talk to you guys about uh, some abstract and some um, maybe, you know, how I get through some of my abstract work or when I feel like I'm done or not done. Then I wanna talk to you guys about some journaling. Okay, so jam packed. So get your coffee and your wine and your tea and relax and get your art journal and doodle around with me while I'm yip yapping away. So I'm just gonna put this here. All right. I did give my whole family strict instructions to not game right now or stream or anything. My husband, um, which I think I told you guys last week, is getting over his COVID from even with his shot. Uh, has been, has found TikTok. Oh my gosh, you guys, he's totally addicted to TikTok because he had no energy to do anything. He's like, have you seen TikTok? I'm like, oh boy, we're in trouble. So I just ran in the house and I said, do not get on TikTok while I'm live. Okay, and if you're there listening, get off TikTok. Okay, so this is one piece and I'm going to put this on the table and show it to you. All right, it's really big and it's raw cotton canvas. Okay, I got this. I'm gonna scroll it, roll, roll it down and then I'll show it to you better on the table. So this is canvas that I got in a roll on Blick and it's just medium uh, raw. Um, so it's raw means it's unprimed and it came in a roll. And I, and I got the roll, and I don't even know where part of the roll is. And I got the roll, you guys, I had, I had this idea that I, last year, that I wanted to create a wall, beautiful wall hanging, and I wanted to stress out the sides and find a really cool way to hang it and, and put it in a part of my house. Like, you know, like there's so many walls that are skinny. And I thought, you know, that'd be really cool to have a, just a gorgeous wall hanging down one wall. Okay. So that's like the vision I had. I had no idea what I wanted to do with it. By the time the canvas came to my house, I was already on to my next idea. <laughs> and so it's been rolled up in the corner. Then I, besides the regular cotton, unprimed i also got a roll that was primed so this is really big and i'm not done with it yet but renee my friend renee mueller would think i'm done with it because she loves these colors but i of course i'm like i need to get blue on there somehow but this is primed so this is the same weight of canvas but it has weight on it it's primed with like one coated gesso there's definitely a difference between the two. And I'm gonna put them both down on the table and I'm gonna paint a little bit on both of them so you can see. The primed, because it's white, the colors are gonna be brighter and they're going to um, not soak in as much. It's sort of like painting on a canvas. There's definitely some cool things about it. And one of the things is, um, that you know you could also turn this into a really cool wall hanging. It's not going to do that kind of edging as much because it's already got a coat of paint on it, but it may. I mean, I have to kind of Google that and figure that out a little bit more. So my whole idea with the wall hanging was to have the edges a little bit rough. But this one, I loved just playing with inks. And so what happened was, you know how I have been working on just messing around in the art studio with inks. And I was been, I've been using for the last month, and if you're new, I'm sorry, but in for the, la for the last month or so, I have been playing around with um, acrylic inks and, water and liquid watercolors. So I have been working small, like 12 by 12 inch, and making these sort of floral shapes. And I've been working on and working on and working on it, and all of a sudden I had this like inkling to work bigger, like, Okay, well this is really fun, but now I want to get bigger. But I didn't necessarily want it to go on a canvas, uh, like on a, one of these. So I um, remembered, I'm like, ooh, I have that rolled canvas. And the reason why I felt like that was the next place I wanted to play was because a lot of my morning practice is sitting down at the table. I'm still in that like quiet place and I still want to sort of just sit down and relax and, 
and not make it a big deal. And But I thought, you know, I'll just unroll the canvas and I'll put it on the table. And that's how I started. So I'm gonna bring the um, camera down and we're gonna talk about it flat. And then you're gonna see some stuff of how I'm doing it and how easy it is and how much fun it is. And you guys, the rolls of canvas, I looked it up and I, I put it on my blog post. And my last blog post, which you can find, they're on andreagarvey.com. My last blog post, I linked to both of these canvases. So they're both from Blick. I'm sure we can find them on Amazon and all the other places. But the ones that I'm showing you are the ones that I got at Blick. And um, one is primed and one is unprimed. Okay, so hold on. I'm gonna go for a little bit of a, a journey. Journey. Oh, and if you guys have... um. Any questions I'll have to go I'll go back and look but I'll also have the computer on and uh, right next to me okay so hold on we're gonna flip up we're gonna flip 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 all right so okay and I'm gonna push this up you're gonna see my big old tripod but that's okay all right so we're just getting started here, and I'm sorry you can't see the whole entire thing, but I do want to talk to you guys about the first one, which is the one that I did on the primed. Okay, so one of the things I did with this one in particular is that I did not use any brushes or um, regular paint. Everything here was done with inks, a skewer and my fingers okay so I uh, let's see where are all my skewers I have so many of them of course of course I can't of course I don't have them right in front of me uh, hold on okay what the heck hold on where did all my skewers go I probably have used so many of you guys. I'm not even kidding you. I can't find one of them. That is ridiculous. <laughs> They're somewhere. Somebody took them all. Uh, okay, well, this is the closest thing. It's kind of like one, and I'm not going to probably even skewer today, but I just wanted to show you. Okay, so I started with it white. It's really big, and what I did was this was my favorite toy when I played with this thing. And I used magenta ink. I don't have the magenta right in front of me, but cause I'm gonna be using this one, but I used one of the inks like this and I used a um, orange, I used a Dr. Martin orange liquid acrylic. I was experimenting with these Dr. Martins. So Dr. Martins, besides doing the amazing um, watercolors, they also did, they also do these liquid acrylics, which how gorgeous is that color, right? Isn't that pretty? And you guys know how much I'm not a big yellow fan, but I love that. So anyway, I started playing around and all I did was I literally used my fingers and the skewer and put the pink ink down and then I put the orange ink down and I took my skewer and I smushed it around and then I let it dry a little bit. So I'm a big believer in letting it dry a little bit between. And then, so I just take that heat dryer, which is this guy. Um, hold on. You know, just my regular little heat it. And it's not to dry it completely but you know what it does for me you guys it just sets it it just sets it a little bit so that way there is some overlap there is some some transparency but you're still going to get things to blend the thing with the canvas especially the next one i'm going to show you it is it does take a long time for it to dry okay so this is just it's kind of like paint, painting on, well, it is, it's painting on canvas. It's a little bit plasticky feeling. Um, it doesn't have a lot of tooth to it. 
but it was really fun because the ink sort of like set on top and you see the white all i did was i took this and i poured these beautiful big white circles and then i moved my fingers around and you guys it was so much fun and it was so liberating to just not paint with a paintbrush and just use my hand and smush things around like this you know that's all i've been doing and if um you just stop and you look it, it and the thing about doing this too is oh i must have just spilled a little bit um the thing about doing this too is it makes you just put it away and stop for a while because it, i do want it to dry between layers so i hung it up i got i went to um staples with my kids to get art supplies to get art supplies don't i wish to get school supplies and i got a big thing of like foam core poster board and I stapled this to the poster board so that way I could hang it up on um, my wall easel or I could hold it up against a wall. But I did it because I wanted to also um, be able to look at it and, and think about it. And so Renee and I chat every week and I showed her what I was working on and she's like, oh my God, I love it. <laughs> and I started laughing so hard because I'm like, well, of course you do. You love these earthy beautiful colors which are her favorites but I'm so tempted to cover it up with blue and green and I decided I'm going to leave it because she asked me to so I, I left it and it's also good to show you guys um, for now and to just really stop and and and, and think about it and look at it and think like what do I love about it what do I not like about it I love the fluid looking, you know, way these paints go together. And if I just stopped and I just really thought about that, or if I went right ahead with a blue, well then, you know, I don't know if I would have loved it as much. So this is an ongoing um, piece <laughs> and we'll see what happens, but I want, you can't really, well, maybe you can hear it. Do you see? Okay, and then the other thing I did, and Leslie, uh, thank you for bringing that up um, about the petals, is that the petals yesterday, I had a bunch of petals that were falling, and I was able to sort of look at them and get some, hold on, I'm gonna show you some right here, just get some ideas for making shapes. That's something that's super important to me is, you know, look around and see what you have outside and think about, okay, if I'm really stuck on my abstract and I don't know what shape to do, well, then maybe I'll just do this shape. I mean, look how beautiful that is. And maybe I'll pick that color. So, okay, I wanted to show you that. All right, so I am gonna show you the next one and I'm gonna do a little demo on the next one. All right, so I'm pulling this away. And did somebody say anything about sewing on them? Because I know that you can definitely stitch, you know, hand stitch. Like Jean Oliver does that a lot where she'll take her canvas and she will just stitch right inside of it, which is so cool. You just get one of those big um, needles. All right, so let me show you what I like. Well, I show you, I'll show you what I started with. So I took this piece of canvas I'm gonna bring this down a little bit so you can see it. So I took this piece of canvas and oh my gosh, look how cool these edges are gonna be when I'm done with it. I'm gonna start to pull them off a little bit and it feels good. Look, it just feels so nice and just fun. So what I did was I put the green and the blue and the white and I covered this whole thing so, so look at this part. I covered the whole thing in that color and then I let it dry and it took a while for it to dry. I would say, you know, a good day or so because the difference between painting on this as opposed to painting on um, the primed is that it really, really soaks in big time. And I'm gonna show you that with um, a little demo. But what I wanted to do is, okay, so I did the blue and the green, and then the next day I was like, okay, well, I was it was so foggy. I think I just wanted to see blue sky. But so what I did was I started thinking about my floral motif. And this is abstract, so 
But I wanted to talk, this will segue into my abstract conversation actually. I wanted to show you that even though it's abstract, there's definitely some floral things happening in here. So one of the shapes that I love to do is I love to do these flowers. And I went back to my old journal and I looked at the shape of these, you know, there's, it's not really a particular flower as much as it's just this beautiful opening. There's so many flowers that look like this, but it's just the shape of it looking on the side. So not looking down as much, but just looking on the side and having it open up into this beautiful um, feel. Like, isn't that funny? These are from this morning. And these, this is from two years ago or whenever I did that a year and a half ago. I'm going to put these aside for a second. Anyway, I wanted to show you this because sometimes when you practice in your journal, you're just going to keep working on the same shapes over and over or the same colors. And you're going to get to a point where that is your signature. That is you. That's what you like to draw. And just keep paying attention to that. So without even noticing, I think there's a couple more like that too that I do, you know, this sort of open thing. But what I noticed is when I paint, I keep doing these same shapes. And so I took some pinks and I took some whites and I took a little bit of orange and I layered over the blue. So back here, you'll see all the little bits of blue and green from that very first layer are starting to peek through because I've covered over some of it, but not all of it. And that's what's really important is to just think about, you know, um, layering and layering and letting some come through and some not, you know, cover up things that you may not like. So I love the little peaks and pops of the blue and green. So what I wanted to do is take the piece that's down here and show you how I started to do this yesterday. Okay, so we're gonna put that right there. And one of the things I noticed for this type of canvas is I used a lot more water. I'm just gonna pop this down, grab some Nova. Oh, you guys, I've got good news. Terry told me, and then I looked it up, and it is true. Nova now ships internationally. Now, Terry, you're going to have to let the group know what the cost is, but they ship internationally, and um, you can put in an order. And so I took, I sent a photo of the the colors that I love, and I can certainly do that with this group. Um, but the uh, fact that you guys can get them is awesome. Now they've really been working on, you know, changing their website and updating some stuff and I think they realize that you know they have to ship internationally because they're great and they're worth it so um I'm hoping the shipping's not outrageous so if it is you know get the little one ounce because these last a long time I only recently moved up to the bigger ones because I was painting a lot more, but the little ones for the first couple of years I used them, I used like, I would it'd take me a year to go through a tub. Okay. So I wanted you guys to know that. And I'm going to use a little bit of this white, a little bit of the magenta, definitely my favorite golden. And I may or may not use a squirt of this, but I wanted you guys to see how much fun it is. So give me one second. I do use brushes when I'm at this stage. So the first one I showed you with um, on the primed, that first layer, and this first layer was really not with brushes. They were just with my fingers, the skewer, and spraying the water and letting it dry completely. So I have these brushes here. One of them is um, King Art and they're really in bad condition. I'm so sorry. And this one, um, I think my mom gave me, I can't remember but they're nice and big and fat. So, all right, I'm gonna put a little bit of the magenta down. And a little bit of the white. I don't probably even need this much white because uh, I'll be using the bigger one, but 
And I have my inks if I need them. And where's my water? And here's my water. Okay, so again, it's like thinking about the shapes that you love and you like to make. And one of the things is that I love pink, all right? And I also love those flowers. And I do still wanna see some of this blue. I think it's really pretty. So I'm just gonna mix up a little bit of paint right here. And I just use my brush and I think, okay, like where do I wanna put it? All right, so maybe I wanna not dig in this circle anymore. I love circles, but sometimes they're just too obvious. And so, especially cause that's dark against the light. So I'm just gonna use this bigger brush and start making that shape. You know, it's again, it's at more abstract. So it's just, I'm just representing a floral here. Okay, and then I might do that over here. Look at that magenta against that turquoise. Is that incredible? Love, 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 love that. And I'm twisting my brush. I'm twisting my brush and just again, sort of making shapes, not really thinking too much. I'm not really thinking about where these go, you guys, as much as I'm like, mm, I'm loving the color. I'm digging the color. Okay, this is where it can get really fun. So I'm adding a little bit of this white titanium over to my left and making it a little bit more fluid. It's just a different feel to paint on the fabric because it's not stretched because it's, you know, it's looser. It's, um, it doesn't feel as, I don't know, maybe as serious to me. It just feels more play, even though I don't want to be putting anybody down who, you know, it is serious for them. So I'm, uh, I'm using a spray, my water spray bottle. This is where painting on the, this raw unprimed is so awesome because it like soaks in this color and then I can start messing around again a little bit more. I can add in some of that magenta straight up and just put that right in the water. So this is really wet and you can see it starts to do its thing. It's just blending and soaking. I, fi I find I can control it a little bit more on, the on this than I can on a canvas. Sometimes I feel like the canvas is so tight that the water just like pools and goes across. Where here, it just soaks in right away. So it's a little bit easier to control the water. And um, I just really like the effect of it. And it's wet, like it will, it will take most of the day to dry. And, um, you know, that's what's also really great about this canvas is that I literally was doing this all day, just moving it up and down as I was going it, okay? And I might go in and touch. It's a little bit like, um, it reminds me of Monet, you know, just the way that he would paint on, I mean, paint his flowers just in broad strokes of color. And when you step back, you can really see the flower form, but not necessarily when you're up close like this. It's just dreamy and I just really like it. This is a little brown splotch that happened. So I um, <laughs> will definitely be covering that up. I'm gonna get a new brush that has no um, pink in it. Well, that now I just put it in pink, so hold on. And I could even do like something like that where I'm just gonna put it right in there. And you could see the wetness, right? You can see all that, so I'll just drag this brush around and maybe even bring that shape out a little bit more. And I'm really loose. I'm holding my brush extremely loose. Just 
Let's see where else. Do I want to add a little bit of white? Maybe down here. So if you guys have any raw canvas, try this. Let it dry between layers. Okay, so I'm going back down here again so you can sort of see these lines that I'm doing with the white. I might go in with my brush and just pick up some more of that flower shape. I wanna keep it really dreamy. What I don't wanna do is I don't wanna paint anything super, super dark. And right now I'm just layering and layering and layering it. That's all I'm doing. And um, letting it dry between, because it is acrylics and it, once it is dry, it won't reactivate, but it will take all day. And Suzanne, um, that was a good question. Does the color does move for sure when it's wet? And it will, the thing about spraying with water right now is that because it takes so long to dry, you have a lot of time to play around with that color and it will move and it will blend until you actually dry it either with a heat dry or you leave it for a day and then it won't blend the next day. But um, the color will definitely move and it is like painting, you know, in a very fluid style. I'll show you up here. Even what I did up here, let me show you. Even the paint that I just did, this canvas is really wet. You can see how wet it is. Isn't that fun? <laughs> I love getting my hands dirty. Uh, not dirty. I like my hands to be dirty with garden dirt or paint. <laughs> that is it. Um, okay, so you can see, I, I'm just gonna do this because I'll paint over it or something anyway. But you can see those colors that I did earlier. It will move. You know, and what's really interesting is you never know what you're gonna get. So I'm gonna leave this totally the way it is and see how that dries later tomorrow. But look at that blue next to the pink. So don't be afraid to, you know, put colors that you wouldn't necessarily paint together and, and see how they react. The other thing is if I had a skewer, <laughs> I'd be able to do this a little bit better. This, I don't know, this is the part of a paintbrush. I swear to God, I think like some fairies came in and took all my skewers. I had so many, unless my husband's using them for barbecuing, I don't know where they are, but you can also, when it's wet, you know, make some marks like this too. You know, make some marks. You can do all the same things that you do on regular canvas, but what I love about it is that the water takes it to a whole nother level than if you did it on a stretched primed canvas. So the difference again is that when it's not primed like this, it's gonna soak in and you can move the colors around, okay? And if it's primed, they're gonna sit more on top like a canvas and it may not be as much of a, um, they may not look very similar, like this might be more, um, you know, soft and romantic and the others are more maybe a little graphic, the two different ones I showed you, but that's because the way that they're drawing, I'm just letting them sit on top. So the orangey one, I just did the inks and I wanted to see what it would look like the next day. This one is just a little bit more soft, more like watercolors. Alrighty, okay, I wanted to show you um, would you guys have any questions on that one? Let's see, do the colors get a little faded or dull because it's unprimed? I think they're not necessarily dull, I wouldn't say, but there is definitely an effect that it's softer. And I believe, Cheryl, it's primed with gesso. I When you get um, primed canvas, it's a white, and I believe it's the same thing when you buy um, canvas that's stretched, it's the same thing. It's like that same weight. And when I look at this, yeah, I would say that it's a little bit duller, um, but 
who's to say that when this layers dry, I like I could go in and I could paint because there's going to be so many layers of this. Then when I take my regular painting, like my regular paint, it's going to stay on top and they can be nice and bright, whatever you want to do. So anyway, I um, wanted to leave that and wipe this off before I grab some abstract stuff. All right, I'm going to turn it around so we can chat a little bit, all right, about abstract. So hold on. Here we go. Oh, there's my ceiling. We I'm back. Hopefully you guys are still here. Okay, I'm just going to put it right there. All right, you guys. Now, um, Sandy, have I ever used inks on the raw canvas? Yes, all of that below was a lot of these inks. They were, the blue and the green were inks. And I definitely use inks a lot on my first layers, whether it's the raw canvas or whether it's the white, the, the primed canvas. Um, I use inks mostly. And it was only the second layer of these flowers that I started to use regular paint. So, all right. Okay. So here's what I want to talk to you guys about a couple things. One is abstract and, um, I'm going to sit with my feet crossed, mm -hmm. my legs crossed. Okay. I've got a couple of abstracts back there. Do you see them? All right. So, um, okay. You guys, Abstract art is so hard. <laughs> I'm not going to lie. <laughs> I think that everybody should do it. And um, the reason I think it's hard is, I got to straighten my wallet. It's all, the reason why I think it's hard is because it's really hard to figure out when you're done. And it's really hard to figure out when you, it actually like looks good and you're like, oh yeah, 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 that's done. So I started playing around with abstracts on a lot of my work, it, there's abstract underneath. Almost every art I do in a painting, it's abstract and it's abstract for a while. And what happens is um, I, I get a little nervous to leave it the way it is. And so I then put you know uh, an image on top and I'm like digging the abstract. It looks so, so good. I love it, love it, love it. And then I'm like, oh, I don't know if it's done. And if it's not done, then what should I do? I'll put flowers or my elephants or my ladies with flowers on top because that's where I feel comfortable and that's where I feel safest when I'm creating art. I feel like I can do that in my sleep. I feel like I can paint my, my paintings that are very um, natural to me to paint. So abstract is a whole nother thing. And I have decided, I decided when COVID um, started, when our pandemic started and we were home a lot that I just really wanted to try it and play with it. And when I was done with something, I wanted to leave it. And it's still, it's like, oh, sometimes it's really hard to leave your art uh, the way it is and say it's done. In fact, all my abstracts in this art studio, I could still keep pulling off the wall and I could still keep playing with it. I could still keep working on these all the time because I'm always like, hmm, what else should I do to it? So here's my little tip on abstract and I am no expert at all, but I find that when I feel in my heart and in my gut and in my soul that the art, what I created is done or looks good or I'm feeling good about it, then that's when I feel like I'm done and I'm gonna stop working on it. And abstract, like any art, is so, so subjective. I was thinking this morning about this and I was thinking about how, you know, beauty is in the eye of the beholder. So whatever you feel is beautiful, whether it's abstract or it's whether it's a, a you know, image that's realistic, that's how it makes you feel and when I work with abstract, it's sort of like that feeling inside when I know it feels and it looks good. And it comes with so much practice and lessons and repetitive marks and things that you like. And it's just, if you could take, if you could take all of it and you put it inside a pot, then you would feel comfortable creating your abstract. And so at first, when people are out there, if you're new to abstract and you're, and you're kind of trying it 
and it's giving you the willies, that's a good sign because that means that you're, you shouldn't be able to just paint abstract and be like, oh yeah, it's so good. That's Mark Rothko. Oh yeah. No, no, no. It takes so long because it's practice and it's repetitive. And so I would recommend anybody who's thinking about doing abstract is to um, look online, see what you like. First of all, look at the masters, look at um, museums. And if you can't go to a museum, look online at museums. Pick out the things that you like, that gravitate to you. Not what is considered good, it's whatever you like. Then the next step I would do is I would start creating small little abstracts. You know, it's really, um, it took me a while to do this big one and um, I just sort of went for it and I was about to cover it all up and I posted it and I had too many people say, oh, I like it. <laughs> So I was like, really? <laughs> and then I started to become more comfortable with it. So I would start small. I would work in your sketchbook. I would work in your, um, maybe in little pieces of little paper ones, like these ones I'm gonna teach. This is that free class that I have coming up. Um, these are just five by sevens. They're small little ones. And when you're working with abstract, there's a few things that you can do as little tips because what's important is composition and also balance to me when you're working with abstract because you don't really have like a flower in the center of your your painting and you can go oh yeah that's straight or it's taking up this much room abstract is so subjective so I love to um, take black and white photos I love to turn things around and see, is there one area of my painting that's just too dominant? Then maybe I put something over on my other area of my painting. Look around at other artists, look at other artists' work, and if you feel you really like that abstract piece, then look at it a second time and think, is there something, is it balanced? How are the colors working together? Do I like the marks that's on there? Are the marks balanced? So all of that is completely with practice and seeing what's out there. So my um, comments back to um, Melissa, who posted beautiful art in our Facebook community, and she's an amazing artist. I just felt so much for you when you wrote that your husband kind of looked at it and then your um all the joy and the love for it went out the window because maybe he said something and i just want you to know that i have just gotten hardened after years and years of painting from college to even working in my graphic design degree to my creative director degree to my um not degree to my um job in the corporate world to painting on my own and then finally doing my job here is that so many times I had people who would take that joy right out of my sails, suck it right out. I was in art shows and I would have all my art, you know, my first few art shows and I'm in my outdoor festival and I got all my stuff in my booth and people would walk by and be like, <laughs> or I had people who would literally walk by and not even notice, or I had people who come in to my area and say like right in front of me to their mom or daughter or friend or be like, yeah, you can do that or you can do that. So my husband or my kids, or if they say something and they're really supportive, but if they said something along the terms of like, oh, okay, yeah, that's good. Mm, I like that one better. You know, what I want to say is to everybody out there who's creating art, remember that art is coming from you and it's you creating it. It's so subjective that not everyone is going to love it or feel about it the same way you feel about it. And a perfect example is if you go to see a, mus a musical or if you go to see a dance or if you listen to somebody's poetry, it can move people to tears. Or the next person next to you could be like, oh, snoring. So you just have to remember that, that even though it's a family member, they may not necessarily get it or feel the same way you do about your art. And that's only gonna come with practice and time and the ability for you to know inside of yourself that, you know what, I really like it. And 
this is the one thing that I love about the journey that I'm on is that the very first time I sold something to somebody else and they cried, they literally cried. And it's the one, it's my pink elephant. And you guys have heard this story so many times. Um, this one, this is just a, this is just a print of it. But when somebody bought this piece, I cannot even tell you <laughs> that they cried. It was a wonderful man and I cried. And that's when I figured it out. That's when the light bulb went off in my head that made me think to myself, wait, somebody else loved my piece as much as I did? And that just she was a game changer to me. That, that felt to me like I was on the right track and I was doing the right job and I was making somebody else feel the way I felt about it. So there's not gonna be every person that like that man is not gonna happen and come to my shows or buy my product. Nope, it's not gonna happen. It's just gonna be a small select group like you all, you know, it's going to be a small select group that's gravitating to you and your art. And it just may not be that um, person that lives with you, or it might not be your kids, but that's okay, you guys. So I'm hoping that helps. Okay. I really just want you to know that just keep on doing it. That's the most important. Just keep on being creative. And remember, it's how you feel inside of you. All right. That's how I do. That's what I do with my abstract work. So I'm hoping that helps you guys. And there was another question. Um, maybe it was Leslie. I can't even remember about maybe, and I can't even remember the question, but I want you to know when you do abstract work, Sometimes the only way I know when I'm done is, again, it's that same feeling inside. It's that gut feeling. It's like that gut check. You know, your gut and your heart, it's all, your soul, it's all going to tell you when you're yes or no. And um, with anything in life, right? Okay, I totally rambled. <laughs> surprise, surprise. <laughs> But I want, I just felt so much for Melissa and she posted that and her art is fantastic. Okay, so I love it. And you're gonna find people who love it. And especially those who are thinking about selling your art. If you ever get to that point too, we could do a whole entire Facebook Live on that because I just want you to know that there's, people want you and your art and your creativity and your spark. Trust me on that, okay? All right, so last night I created my um, stuff for my Zoom class. <laughs> I know it's been forever since I did the class, but I was thinking about what I want to do. And you guys, you guys have heard me talking about doing uh, some journals because I think journals are so much fun. So I have this like stack of handmade journals. I've got so many of them and I love creating them and I love filling them in. And so what I wanted to do for the, so I wanna do this series of three lessons. And the first one is September 18th. And then the replay of course is available. And in the first one, we're gonna make a journal together. And in the next couple of them, we're going to work in the journal on specific themes. So I made the journal last night and um, it's so cute. So it's out of Fabriano paper, but in the first, I'm gonna have to hold it. I should have done this with the table down. In the first Zoom, we're gonna make it together. I'm gonna to show you all the materials you're gonna need in advance. And we're going to do all the backgrounds with acrylic inks and papers, different types of papers. We're gonna prep it and hold on, get to the end. We've got some black gesso paper and then a couple white ones at the back. And we're going to go through a whole bunch of my journals and we're going to sew and make. And then the following couple Zooms are all gonna be about um, just putting in different themes and I'm gonna help you guys with that too. All right, so I was hoping <laughs> to get them in um, online and get that all up and ready. But as soon as I have it up and ready for the link, I'll let you guys know. And the Zoom classes are $20 each or there's gonna, it's gonna be three for 50. Awesome! Okay, and the other thing is, real quick, I'm putting in my order. 
on Monday. So I have all of you guys who have emailed me or told me about them that they would like to order the scarves for the holidays. Um, uh, thank you, I have your order. And if you guys want to put it in, make sure you get it in this weekend. Cause I think it takes a couple months. Do, 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 do. What time is it? Two minutes to go. I know some of you guys were bummed last week that it wasn't quite an hour, but you know, I still know how to uh, <laughs> fill an hour of chit chatting. All right, so let's see some questions. Uh, Oprah, Oprah, opera. Let me tell you, I got it right here. Hold on. I'm coming back. I'm coming back. All right. Oh, and don't go anywhere. Um, where is it? Renee sent me. I'm hopping all over the place because Renee sent me. Where is it? Where is it? Okay, here it is. All right, here's my. Here it is. All right, I love mission. I know we're backwards because of the camera. Bright um, opera. <laughs> you guys, every time I want to, every time I see this, I want to say Oprah. <laughs> I read Oprah every night. Has it, does anybody have a Super Soul Sunday book? It's about this big. I'm gonna show it to you. I'm gonna show next week. I'm gonna bring it. You guys, I gotta write that down so I don't forget. Um, it is amazing. Every night I just read one page and I'm like out. I sleep so great. I, I'm like out, but it's so good. All right, so this one is by Mission Love. This one is by Holbein. I know that's not how you say it. And um, this is, Renee sent me two of these because this is not her favorite color. Oh, I just wanted to say, oh, you guys, there's a link. I'm gonna send a link on the scarves today and you'll see a little video and I'll put that up there. Okay, so I'll remind you. But I wanted to say one other thing about abstract and pink and this, okay, is Renee, who may or may not still be on, even Jean Oliver, they're not gonna have that in their house. That's not their thing, that's not their jam. This is not their jam. When I went to Jean Oliver's um, uh, workshop, she bought paint for me, just for me to use, and mentioned it. It was like, I got you your paint, because that's my jam. If you look at this, how much pink is in here? Tons, right? Hi, Renee. And so I just wanted you to know that just because Renee may not want this in her house, that doesn't mean it's not good. That doesn't mean it doesn't fill me up. That is the most important thing is that when you create art, it doesn't mean everybody's going to love it. And that's what I really want to really for you guys to think about. And as soon as I remembered Renee gave me these pinks. I want it reminded me of that, and it's so important to realize that um, you know it's just you're gonna create magic that other people are gonna love, and that's magical to them, and it speaks to them, and it's just not for everybody. And if it was for everybody, we'd be like McDonald's and Target. We don't want to be McDonald's and Target. Oh, I know Renee. <laughs> And Renee loves it. And I love all Renee stuff. It's just that, you know, that's not what she's going to have hanging up in her dining room. I know that. So anyway, um, all right. I love you guys. I really, 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 it fills me up to be here every Saturday. When I get off this live, I am full and I'm full, full, full. So, and I'm full of joy and happiness. So thank you for showing up and thank you for sharing your heart with me. And I will see you guys next Saturday. I'll put a link to the scarves just in case last minute. And you know, I'll probably order more, just not a ton, just in case. And um, have a fantastic week, you guys. Be safe, okay? Bye-bye.